Hi everybody, this is Mike. I'm one of the admins at the Moon Landing Hoax Facebook group. Today is September 22nd, 2022, and I'm sharing screens with you today in this live stream because I wanna go over uh, an unfortunate turn of events that Facebook has decided to impose on us in regards to the Eugene Akers confession video. Now, as you can see, I'm sharing screens with you right now. It says false information in your group. Content shared in the moon landing hoax contains uh, the same information as a post checked by independent fact checkers. It may have small differences and someone publicly posted in our group and we've had probably about a dozen of you guys a uh, post to our group, the uh, Eugene Akers deathbed confession video. And it uh, links a <clears throat> fact check to um, lead stories here. And that's gonna be putting, being placed rather underneath uh, every single post or video someone links to ostensibly related to this Eugene Akers confession video, okay? So it shows um, here is the post that I guess Facebook had originally uh, targeted. As you can see, this went viral. It says 198,000 views. This person and 92 others on September 13th at 6.55 a.m. made a public post. It says, uh, Eugene Rubin Akers moon landing hoax confession given to Bart Sabrell on his deathbed. Uh, posted by Bart yesterday, okay? Check comments in this post for the video. They got the video posted. And of course, uh, Facebook through this fact check uh, organization, I've never heard of them before, lead stories on September 22nd, 2022. This uh, Madison woman, uh, I can't pronounce her last name, uh, publish this article and anybody that's going to be talking about this Eugene Akers confession video is going to now be linked to this article which is incredibly dishonest and I'm incredibly angry with Facebook that uh, for them linking this article to anybody that wants to discuss this story because I think it's disgusting and incredibly dishonest. But let's start with the Eugene Akers confession video. To those that don't know what it's all about, I'm going to share with you my blog here. Uh, I did an analysis, I'm screen sharing with you right now, about the Eugene Rubin Akers confession video. Now what is that, okay? Uh, on September 11th, Bart Sabrell, who's a moon landing hoax researcher, and has been investigating and exposing the moon landings for the hoax we know they are. Since the late 90s, uh, Bart Sabrell published a documentary uh, entitled A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Moon in 2001. Uh, you can check that out, but it proves that uh, Apollo 11 was faked from low Earth orbit. Uh, the astronauts um, had uh, taken some video footage of them claiming to be 130,000 miles out uh, when in fact they were only about 200 miles up in low earth orbit. The evidence is ironclad. It was published in 2001. So since at least 2001, we've known that the moon landings are a hoax. Uh, we can prove it dozens of different ways in the photographic and video records. So we know it, but we don't know exactly how and when uh, it was faked. Now what happened was Bart Sabrell, who's this researcher I've been talking to you about, uh, had been in touch with uh, Eugene Gilmore, okay? And his real, he, he goes, that's his real name. He goes uh, based on Gene Gilmore is his name. And he died February 13th, 2022. Uh, he had been harassed by uh, government agents. And uh, on his deathbed, uh, he made a confession video. And uh, that confession was recorded on April 12th, 2020. And it was done by Eugene Sun. So Eugene Sun's pointing the camera at him. You can see um, 
uh, Eugene Akers right here, <clears throat> um, going based on his name at the time, Gene Gilmore, he had changed it to for reasons unknown. I'm speculating it has to do with the harassment from government agents. But nonetheless, that was the name given to him. Uh, and then his birth name is Eugene uh, Reuben Akers. Okay, so there was a confession video. And on my uh, blog, Stratagems of the Right Blogspot.com, you know, you can go to that. Uh, I know uh, Google uh, censors my blog, so you can't find it too easily. But I've gone through the painstaking detail of typing up the transcript of the of the interview, or I shouldn't call it an interview. It's a deathbed confession, because his son is recording him, and uh, Eugene had cancer, and uh, basically. What Eugene is doing in this deathbed confession video is, and you can read the whole thing right here on my <clears throat> blog spot, or you can go to Bart Sabrell's YouTube channel. Now you will have to uh, look up Bart Sabrell. If you type moon landing hoax into Google or YouTube, all you're gonna get is a bunch of debunking, as we call it, videos, and people claiming the moon landings were not a hoax. You're not gonna find a legitimate information from our perspective because it is a memory hold, if you will. You can't find it too easily. But if you type Bart Sabrell, it'll take you to Bart Sabrell's YouTube page and you can find the uh, roughly 14 minute confession video if you want and you can watch the whole thing, okay? And I'm just gonna summarize it briefly because it is 14 minutes and this video I'm talking to is probably gonna be longer than 14 minutes, but only because I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail about what it's about and what happened and why it matters and why we're dealing with this uh, BS censorship, which I'm quite frankly pissed off about, okay? So um, his father was Cyrus Eugene Akers, okay? And in 1968, he was stationed at Cannon Air Force Base in New Mexico. So that's what he is saying. His father died in uh, 2002, but on his deathbed in 2002 to his son, and this is his son right here, you can see the video of him, Eugene Akers. So Cyrus Akers to his son, Eugene Akers, in 2002 made a deathbed confession to his son. It was recorded, but lo and behold, it was destroyed in a fire of unknown origin. Now, I wonder why that happened, right? So, uh, so basically, Eugene is telling the story of his father that was told to him at his father's deathbed way back in 2002, okay? And what did uh, Cyrus tell his son, Eugene? Well, uh, in 1968, June 1st through June 3rd at Cannon Air Force Base in New Mexico, which is near the city of uh, Clovis. Uh, you know, he was uh, 14 years old at the time, Eugene, and his father, Cyrus, who worked for the Air Police, uh, Military Police Division at Cannon Air Force Base, was in charge of guarding the entrance to the hangars um, where Apollo 11 was filmed. And he says, if you read through or watch the confession video, he says that uh, President Johnson was there for the first day, and then a bunch of other people were authorized to be there on a list of 15. Now, there were other people that may have been allowed to enter, but there was a list of 15 of the head honchos that were allowed to go in. And again, this was ostensibly June 1st through June 3rd, according to uh, Cyrus Akers, uh, where this was filmed. Now, what they did is they took a bunch of truckloads of sand uh, to create the lunar landscape and then topped it with cement powder to get kind of the brownish gray that you see in the photos, okay, for the, for the moon landing for Apollo 11. Now, this is just Apollo 11. There were five other manned missions to the moon. We believe here at the Moon Landing Hoax Facebook group that both, uh, well, all, Apollo 8, which allegedly orbited the moon, Apollo 10, which allegedly orbited the moon, uh, and then 11, 12, 
13, which didn't go to the moon, uh, but orbited it, and 14, 15, 16, and 17, uh, those were all faked. And the reason we know they're faked is, number one, the photographic and video evidence from NASA themselves proves it. And number two, the radiation of anything beyond low Earth orbit, which uh, gets to about uh, 400 to then 1,000 miles above the uh, Earth's atmosphere. Uh, that's uh, when we get to the territory beyond low Earth orbit. There are deadly belts of uh, radiation uh, from galactic cosmic rays and also from uh, the sun itself. Uh, the radiation is so deadly that no human being can cross it. And lo and behold, the only astronauts that purportedly have crossed the, that area uh, for the entire time there's ever been any space programs around the world is lo and behold, only the Apollo astronauts. And they couldn't go through the, the highly uh, dangerous zone of radiation and uh, that's why they had to fake the uh, moon landings because they couldn't bring human beings through that area of deadly radiation. But anyway, uh, so Eugene Akers uh, goes through his father, Cyrus Akers, all the information that was told to him at his father's deathbed in 2002. Uh, we get the list of all the people that uh, were authorized to go uh, to the uh, filming, at least of Apollo 11. Now, probably how they did this was they filmed it a year ahead of time to make sure that the um, film and video was secure. And then you might remember they applied that ridiculous slow motion effect. Now, we see people in the ISS all the time, International Space Station, and they're not floating around in slow motion, right? Gravity uh, has a different effect on the moon. It's one-sixth gravity but uh, I don't know where they got this ridiculous notion that you'd be hopping around in slow motion. Yeah, it does impact the rate at which you uh, fall, but you can see he's waving his arms, it's all in slow motion in that Apollo 11 <laughs> video, which is ridiculous, of course, but uh, I think they probably spent that year trying to figure out how to apply the effects to that video. And everybody that knows about how the uh, Apollo 11 uh, was originally broadcast. They know that they took some press members to a NASA station where the Apollo 11 original footage was broadcast on the wall. So they pointed their cameras from the feed that everyone saw in 1969 and uh, when they originally did the first moon landing and all they did was project this video that was uh, recorded back in June of 1968, slow motion effects were applied, and voila, we have the uh, original moon landing footage, okay? We don't know if Apollo 12, uh, 14, 15, 16, and 17 were filmed at Cannon Air Force Base, but we do know that Apollo 11 was, and this is the confession video, all right? So who, who is purported to have gone uh, to the uh, Apollo 11 filming site in 1968? We have President Johnson, Neil Armstrong, Edwin Aldrin, uh, Werner von Braun. Now, as we, we'll go through who some of these people are that we know. President Johnson was obviously president of the United States in 1968. Neil Armstrong and Aldrin uh, were two of the astronauts. Those were the two that were reported to have walked on the moon. Now, Mike Collins was uh, piloting the command module, and I'm sure they didn't want to see Mike Collins, uh, having Mike Collins see, rather, this filming site, because he's not supposed to see any of this. He's supposed to have been in the command module orbiting the moon. So that likely explains why you didn't see Mike Collins on this list. He was the third astronaut but you did see Neil and Edwin Aldrin, Buzz as we call them. Those were the two that probably surveyed the scene just to kind of, so they could see uh, what they were supposed to have quote unquote recalled, uh, falsely of course, uh, to the press when they talk about their uh, moon landing, which as everybody knows, they spent a couple weeks in quarantine when they got back and then about a month later, they had their first press conference, right? So. I think they were uh, just trying to uh, 
make sure they could get away with it first. And after a month, they were like, oh, okay, we can get away with it. All right, let's have the press conference and see how that goes. Um, so who else was there? Werner von Braun. He was a uh, Nazi, believe it or not, that was uh, recovered, we'll say, from World War uh, II through uh, Operation Paperclip. So a lot of people don't know this, many of you do, but a lot of the Nats, uh, NASA scientists uh, were Nazis, and the Russians took some of these Nazis after the spoils at the end of World War II, and America did too. And one of them was one of their top rocket scientists building rockets that, uh, quite frankly, killed a lot of people in the United Kingdom. And Werner von Braun was responsible for that. Uh, there's also a book you can read, Operation Paperclip, and they document and show proof that uh, Werner von Braun was uh, uh, actually signed some orders to turn over uh, you know, slaves, as we might call them, uh, prisoners, whatever you want to call them, uh, from different slave camps to help work on some of the sites for his rocket. And you can read that uh, in the book Operation Paperclip. It goes into tremendous detail. So anyway, uh, because you know he signed some of those orders, he was a war criminal, right? So you know this guy, uh, if he didn't cooperate, of course, and he's in charge of the rocket program, uh, you can look him up, right? And uh, if he didn't cooperate with NASA, well, I'm sure they could make him go to uh, prison for a very long time. A lot of people know about the Nuremberg trials for the Nazis, and many, many, many were hung, and a lot of Nazis uh, fled to various countries. Well, apparently, if you were a smart rocket scientist, then you could go work for NASA in America. Werner von Braun is uh, the head scientist uh, for the rocket program, so he's there. Uh, Robert Emenager who uh, is discussed, at least by Eugene Akers, through his father Cyrus Akers, is in charge of the, the, the filming and kind of the science fiction aspect through the uh, War Department. Gene Krantz, uh, we know him, uh, and James Webb, we know him. These are people, uh, James Webb ran the Apollo program and then he famously resigned in 1968 right before, okay, so James Webb resigned from NASA right before Apollo 8 launch. Now, Apollo 8's the first mission they had to fake. A lot of people think it was Apollo 11 in 1969. Well, yeah, they faked uh, landing men on the moon, and we don't dispute space travel, by the way. We're not a quote-unquote flat earth group, okay? It's perfectly possible the International Space Station exists. It's possible to put things in people into low Earth orbit, and you can put things beyond low Earth orbit. But what you can't do, of course, is send human beings beyond low Earth orbit. That started with Apollo 8. We believe here James Webb, uh, you might know about the James Webb Telescope. Well, he was the NASA administrator up through 2018. And right before Apollo 8 blasted off, he's like, nope, not for me, I'm done. And I think it's because he didn't want to be associated with the fraud if they were caught, okay? Uh, you can see some of these other people, Dr. Christopher Kraft, uh, he was famous for talking about uh, skip reentry, a procedure where the uh, capsule, when it comes back from the moon to the earth, uh, flying back at tens of thousands of miles per hour, well, uh, you know, he indicated that uh, Paolo did some type of skip reentry, but the records indicate that he didn't. And uh, one of the Apollo astronauts, there's an article on Aulis you can look up where, uh, and I forget the astronaut's name at the top of my, my head, but if you go to aulis.com, you'll be able to see the article. But one of the guys uh, they were interviewing, he asked, well, Dr. Christopher Kraft said that they did a skip reentry, but you're saying they took the strain in approach. And then, uh, you know, the astronaut said to the public, if we could feed uh, Chris Kraft to a bomb, we would. He's a bad guy, right? Which it's like, whoa, where did that come from? Okay. Dr. James Van Allen, who is he? He's the radiation expert, right? So when we're talking about 
how we know the uh, moon landings were faked, well, back in the 1950s, they sent up some uh, weather satellites or satellites to kind of uh, monitor things in low Earth orbit. They put a Geiger counter on there, and uh, the Geiger counter was going off the charts uh, when the information was radioed back, and they were recording these Geiger counter readings, and then all of a sudden it stopped. That meant, and James Van Allen knew, that uh, the radiation was so bad that it was off the charts, okay? Now, understand that this just uh, measures, you know, basic radiation that we see on Earth. There's all kinds of different radiation, all right? There's galactic cosmic rays, there's solar flares. There's things even a Geiger counter wouldn't necessarily even pick up that come with particles. And, uh, you know, giant, uh, what happens basically is when a craft is launched into uh, beyond what we would call these Van Allen belts, by the way, which is, uh, well, basically to explain it, the Earth has an iron core, it projects a magnetic field, the magnetic field blocks all that radiation from killing us. Because you might wonder, well, if space would kill us with the radiation, what's keeping us alive on Earth? And of course, the answer to that question is the Van Allen belts, as they call them, right? Van Allen had a press conference and he described these things, uh, what was going on and how the Earth's iron core produced this magnetic field that was trapping all this radiation. That's what he detected there, he said in his satellites he sent into Earth orbit to detect this in the 1950s. And a journalist said, well, that's kind of like a belt. And they, it stuck, right? Now they call it the Van Allen belts. And then we have, uh, these are generals that stepped down, but General Trudeau, we had stepped down at the time, and Lieutenant Colonel Donald Simon and Grant Norrie, who they believe probably worked from this for the CIA or the NSA. And then the other thing they reveal in this is that anybody that spoke out, any of these people, including Cyrus Akers, they would go to prison, right? And they would be imprisoned if they spoke out about this and exposed the hoax. That's why um, the uh, confession was made on the deathbed, right? These people are terrified for their lives. They don't want to go to prison. They could be killed. And uh, as you might know, or if you read it, you would know, I should say, it was the United States National Security Agency, okay, that originally uh, swore them to secrecy, okay? So the NSA is uh, swearing them to secrecy, and uh, one thing I reference in my article that's interesting is that the NSA was a secret until 1975. The public didn't even know what the NSA was. So it was a secret security agency that did something without public oversight at all. So the NSA swore them to secrecy. Uh, you know, this is a top secret. Any of you expose this, you're going to prison. Now, uh, people like to say, well, you know, why didn't anybody blow the whistle? Well, they couldn't, okay? This guy is blowing the whistle, okay? Eugene uh, showing his father, Cyrus. And again, it's a 14-minute confession video. And uh, it goes over, uh, you know, what his, his father uh, told him on, on Eugene's deathbed, okay? He's dying of cancer, he said. So I uh, recorded it April 2020. Uh, he dies February 2022. And then uh, Bart Sabrell, who gets this recording, uh, who knows or knew at the time before he passed away, Eugene Akers, the son of Eugene Akers, who we don't know his name yet. Uh, maybe we will in the future. But for now, uh, ostensibly, Eugene's son wants it to be kept private. They waited a specific time after the son's, uh, excuse me, the uh, son of Cyrus Akers, which was Eugene Akers, uh, waited until a specific period of time uh, of, pa of the pa the passing, excuse me, before uh, they released the video. And lo and behold, Bart Sabrell releases it on September 11th, uh, 2022. Uh, he actually took it down and re-uploaded it a higher quality version on September 13th. So if you go to his YouTube channel, say upload September 13th, you, you know, he did originally release it on the 11th. He just uh, 
uh, re-uploaded on the 13th. So there's a lot of people out there, oh, the link was taken down, somebody, the government took it down, blah, blah, blah. No, uh, Bart Sabrell actually took it down himself and he wanted to re-upload a better quality version, okay? So uh, anyway, uh, Bart Sabrell in his book, okay, that was published a year before in uh, September, uh, 11th again he likes to use that to publish these things that date uh, in 2021 he released a book called uh, moon man and in moon man he goes over all the same details that are released in the confession so there's three pages in moon man you can go to page 180 through uh, 184 and i've screenshot them on my blog and i've highlighted the relevant information so the same thing uh, eugene is saying uh, Bart is talking about in his book here with Cannon Air Force Base. All right, so uh, sorry for the lengthy analysis here if you already knew, but before we get into the nonsense of how they're trying to do damage control on this, I would at least explain the story, uh, get some details from the confession video. So we're kind of all on the same page on what exactly happened, what was said, and what it's all about. Okay, so let's go back here and you can see on September 22nd, this lead stories article was uh, published, okay? And here's how Facebook works, right? Billions of users. So if Facebook has information they deem false, then what happens is, uh, you know, uh, they will put a little tag at the bottom. You're familiar with this and false information, false news or uh, it doesn't even need to be completely false. It could be partly false. And then you're supposed to say, oh my God, I don't want to share false news. This isn't true, right? Uh, so what did uh, lead stories do, which anybody using Facebook gets a link to lead stories. Ain't that a sweet deal, right? Uh, imagine you write an article, you're, you're making money off of advertising, right? You can see the ads right here. And anybody that wants to talk about this story gets linked to this uh, stupid article and then they can make all their ad revenue. What a sweet deal, right? I had never even heard of lead stories today, but apparently they are trustworthy enough uh, to deal with uh, one of the most important confessions in United States history. And this Madison over here is the hubris and arrogance to publish this story and shove this effing narrative down our throats, all right? And I'm completely angry at these m and for doing this, but hey, that's uh, these large corporations for you, right? Uh, you know, if they don't tow with the government's line, I'm sure the government isn't going to be giving them contracts, maybe giving them some adverse legislation in the future. So they're going to do basically whatever the honchos and government want, right? So if you read this, it says, does a viral video describing father's deathbed confession prove the U.S. government faked the 1969 moon landing. No, that's not true. There is a significant amount of evidence that NASA landed on the moon and experts lead stories spoke with refuted claims uh, suggesting otherwise. I don't know what the hell they're talking about here, but nonetheless, they go through and give a brief explanation about a Facebook post on September 13 with the caption, just like I discussed with you earlier. And then we go through and we read this, and this is just hilarious to me. I find this completely <laughs> amusing. So what's the first thing this woman does when she uh, fact checks? Well, let's, let's ask NASA, right? And, and if NASA tells us that it, it's not true, then it must not be true. So NASA refutes the claims in an email sent to lead stories September 20th, 2022. And what did NASA write in the email? By the way, she doesn't reference who sent this email to them. It just says somebody from NASA, right? So we don't know, we can't contact the person at NASA sending this email and you know ask them follow-up questions. You think this is a pretty important response that NASA is giving here. But nonetheless, it's not attributed to an individual, just a, a statement, right? And what is the statement from NASA? It says, there is a significant amount of evidence to support NASA landed 12 astronauts on the moon from 1969 to 1972. 
we collected 842 pounds of moon rocks that have been studied by scientists worldwide for decades. From these rocks, we've learned from the moon, uh, we learned that the moon was once part of the Earth. The moon is about 4.5 billion years old and that most of the moon craters are caused by impact, not volcanism, okay? So that's the statement from NASA, which I find interesting, and I'm going to show you an article It's going to make you laugh right on NASA's website about this in just a moment, okay? <laughs> but, but rather than say, hey, you know, we got all this video evidence and we got photographic evidence we went, uh, and, and they talk about the, they could talk about retro reflectors left on the moon. They could talk about uh, you know various things. But what do they choose to talk about? This is interesting. Okay, uh, what does how does NASA respond? Well, the first of all, they're not denying Eugene Aker's confession. They're not denying Cannon Air Force Base. All they're saying is there's a significant amount of evidence to support NASA landed on the moon. Okay, and I'm Mike Myers. I'm one of the admins for the moon landing hoax, as I told you earlier, but my trade is an attorney, okay? I'm a practicing attorney. I've done many depositions in my career, and I interview people to uh, detect bullshit, for lack of a better word, and I can detect uh, from statements when I know uh, someone's blowing smoke up our ass uh, to begin with, right? So the first thing we would look for is them to deny it, and they're not. They're just saying there is a significant amount of evidence to support NASA landed uh, astronauts on the moon. Imagine your uh, spouse comes up to you and he or she says, uh, did you cheat on me? And you know, your spouse responds, well, there is a significant amount of evidence to support that I've never cheated on you, right? Uh, how would you... <laughs> How would you respond to that if your spouse responded that way to that question, right? Kind of bizarre, right? And they talk about the 852 pounds of moon rocks, which of course could have been collected by an unmanned probe, and we're not disputing the fact that uh, instruments and equipment can be sent robotically to the moon. Uh, other nations have done that. Uh, the United States is the only one to have sent men but a lot, of, uh, a lot of you may be aware, too, that uh, Werner von Braun, who we referenced earlier, uh, went to uh, Antarctica, the South Pole, to collect a bunch of moon rocks for study because moon rocks uh, fall, uh, ostensibly at least, from the moon uh, to the Earth. And for some reason, they are more likely to land, I guess, in the poles as meteorites and they found a bunch of meteorites that came from the moon to the earth in the South Pole. Could some of those uh, samples be mixed in with this quote unquote 842 pounds of moon rock? Well, sure they could have, right? And furthermore, how do you know whether a rock comes from the moon or the earth? Now there's an article I'm gonna get into uh, by NASA where it says uh, ostensibly how you can do that. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, that's what their claim is. Moon rocks, ergo, we went to the moon and they don't respond to it at all, which of course I find fascinating. And of course, you know, Lead Stories editorializes here with their own little comment, China, which is not from NASA because it's not in quotes, of course, China's lunar exploration program, including a January 2019 landing on the far side of the moon. Again, that's not the Apollo landing sites, right? They landed on the side we can see China sent an exploration program to the opposite side of the moon, has not challenged geological or other findings shared from the U.S. landings. Uh, we like to joke in our moon landing hoax Facebook group about the people who say, well, the Russians would have told us, right? Well, the Russians may have told us, right? Uh, but are they going to go on, um, you know, uh, CBS and speak with Walter Cronkite in 1969. Some, some Russian agent's gonna learn to speak English well enough to argue on national television with Walter Cronkite and say the moon landings were fake. I mean, 
would they do that or would they just take a bribe from the US government, right? So as we all know, governments are all uh, you know, related together in the sense that uh, there's quid pro quos between governments and secrets between governments. And in exchange for keeping secrets, certain governments do favors for other governments, right? And I'm sure China would have a lot to lose if they just went out and uh, disputed and fought with America about whether the moon landings uh, were faked or not, right? So China is dependent on the United States for certain technology and programs through NASA. I'm sure they want to keep that going. So are they going to you know, make a public statement and challenge the quote unquote geological or other findings shared from the US landings? Well, no, they're not going to do that. And if you check through the Chinese records, you're not going to find them saying we did go to the moon either. They're just quiet about it, all right? But I found that little editorialization a little bit interesting. So, be, so Eugene Aker's confession video shouldn't be believed because China would have challenged the geological or other findings from the US landings. And because the Chinese government, now I'm sure plenty of Chinese um, or people living in China, including by the way, the fellow admin founder of the group, Dr. Rasa Vihari, he lives in China and he runs our damn Facebook group and he's challenging the landings, right? And we've got 42,000 members. We reach up millions of people, our group, right? And Ross is leading it he's in China and he's challenged it. But I guess what they mean is the Chinese government is not challenged geological or other findings shared from the US landings. Therefore, Eugene Aker's confession video, we can just ignore it, right? <laughs> so anyway, they go through here and they just uh, discuss everything Eugene says and they even confirm uh, Gene Gilmore, the video is said to be recorded April 12th, 2020 and, the, and then I already told you when he died, what was it, February 12th and uh, the confessor's death February 13th, excuse me, 2022. Um, lead stories found the obituary for Gene Gilmore, right? a funeral home in Florida. They found that information, right? So the guy does exist. They looked up Cyrus Acres. They found all the information uh, and they went to the National Cemetery Administration database, found the information, found when he died. Of course, he died in 2002. That's when the deathbed confession video was made, of course. And uh, so they look up all the information, they add it, they even show the uh, tombstones and they verify all that information, right? So uh, what, what they're doing here is they're saying, okay, well, in the video with Eugene Akers, they give the badge number of Cyrus Akers and it's either 07596 or D7596. So it says lead stories filed a freedom of information request with National Personal Records Center, National Archives in Washington to verify the authenticity. We will update this article if appropriate, okay, when the National Archives respond, all right? So, you know, based upon all this, this Madison woman, you can see her picture right here, uh, gets an article where, you know, thousands of us working in this group and hardworking research and Bart Sabrell, who's gone through hell, okay, and Eugene Akers, who went through hell and was harassed by government agents, and he mentions that, uh, where they threatened to kill him, his wife, and his son. So this woman uh, right here uh, has the gall to write this article. Facebook has the gall to link it to everybody so we can dismiss uh, Eugene Akers' confession video. And I find that to be complete and utter nonsense. Now I'm going to go back to something I promised to talk about you earlier, talk about with you earlier, and NASA's reply, which we're focusing on. And I find this hilarious because NASA says that uh, they collected some moon rocks and uh, there's a significant amount of evidence, which apparently is 80, uh, 842 pounds of it, rather. We can ignore all this evidence that we're talking about. And then Madison mentions, well, China hasn't blown the whistle. Ergo, fact check, false information, uncorroborated. Uh, you don't need to look into this any further. And you're, uh, you know, and, and because this is tagged to this Madison's uh, article here by Lead Stories, you know, groups that publish this information, for example, us, 
are going to be demoted in the Facebook algorithm and pushed down for sharing false information. And that aggravates me to no end, as you might imagine. Let's go back to the moon rocks, okay? So the moon rocks ostensibly uh, prove that we went to the moon. Well, uh, they're saying that even we collected some from these rock, we learned the moon was, was once part of Earth. Well, how do they know that? Well, there's an article on NASA's website, solarsystem.nasa.gov, Earth's oldest rock found on the moon. Can you believe this? A big rock from Apollo 14, I'm circling it right here so you can see. Um, well, they tested it and it turned out to be an earth rock, okay? Uh, rather than question the whole methodology, they say, well, the moon, it's about 240,000 miles away. So one quarter of that, about what, 60,000 miles. So it was 60,000 miles from the earth, 4 billion years ago. And we think this rock, uh, you know, something slammed into the earth, caused an explosion, bounced off of earth, landed on the moon and Apollo 14 astronauts walking about and all that quote that cement powder <laughs> it wasn't really the moon service you know picked up this rock and lo and behold okay this is uh they tested it's an earth rock well rather than say that they didn't go to the moon they say well it's an earth rock but see uh, something uh, uh, bounced off of Earth and landed on the moon, okay? And then Apollo 14 just so happened to get over there and uh, pick it up in the 1970s, I think it was, Apollo 14 landed. I mean, you can't make this up, right? There's another article you can look up uh, where there was a Dutch museum and they found out, they tested a moon rock there, that it was just petrified wood, right? And of course, you know, NASA likes to uh, get ahead of the game and make up excuses for that. And you can read about that if you want. They say, well, it was a mistake, right? You know, the person that gave it to them, you know, really wasn't us. So they deny and deflect and say, but, you know, in regards to that Dutch museum, well, NASA must have known that the Dutch were putting that damn rock and claiming it was from the moon. They must have known that, right? And then years and years go by, NASA doesn't intervene and say, oh, well, uh, you know, sorry, you guys don't really have a moon rock. It only turns out when they test the damn thing, oh, yeah, yeah, well, it yeah, didn't really come from us, right, <laughs> you like to say. But, you know, how they got around with this latest testing, um, which is article, uh, yeah, it was 1971, that was Apollo 14. Right. So this article published on NASA, updated February 26, 2019, when they can't get around the fact, yep, this is an earth rock, we've tested it multiple times, uh, you know, oh, well, it must have just bounced off of Earth and landed on the moon. Well, complete nonsense, right? But anyway, uh, so that's all about all today. I just wanted to uh, share with the group my frustrations as an admin for the group uh, on what's going to be happening with this uh, Eugene Akers confession video. I think this is complete nonsense, uh, what they are doing. Uh, this fact check you're seeing right here is complete and total garbage. Uh, I think they should be ashamed of themselves and embarrassed for uh, publishing this and then using it to completely deflect uh, any information about this uh, confession, right? Instead, what we should be doing is we should, there should be a congressional investigation and uh, we should be subpoenaing records from Cannon Air Force Base and all the people that participated in this hoax, if they're alive, they should be charged with crimes. Now, I'm sure under United States law, there are you know, national security exceptions, I'm sure they could argue, and uh, you know, maybe they're not really criminals. So I'm not saying that they're going to go to jail or prison uh, if they were exposed as being involved in this fraud, anybody that's still alive. But we all know ethically that this was a terrible thing that they did, okay? Now, they shouldn't have lied to the American people in the world. I don't care what their justification was. They continue to lie about this nonsense for 50 years. Somebody should pay the price. Somebody should be sitting in a prison cell. And if they're 80 years old, well, guess what? 
live the remainder of your 10 years in a prison cell because you know you should you should pay the price okay there are nazis and i'm not saying that the um, well a lot of nasa scientists were nazis right for reasons i went into like werner von braun that passed away but you know i'm not saying that the crimes of the nazi party are any in any way comparable to the crimes of nasa but you know uh crimes are crimes and there's different degrees and uh, certainly i would not condemn the nasa the non the non-nazi nasa people anyway who participated in this hoax and the nsa more particular lyndon johnson and all of them. i wouldn't condemn them more than the nazis but i still condemn them and they should spend uh, their time in prison, right? So people that are 80 years old that were determined to be involved with the Nazis uh, back in Germany, well, they're going to a prison cell if they can be convicted uh, for war crimes, right? For being involved in any of the uh, quote unquote concentration camps that uh, various people, uh, including many of a particular religious faith, uh, were uh, ostensibly put into these camps, and many, um, you know, Nazis uh, uh, were executed at the end of World War II, and then ones we would still find to this day would serve the remainder of their days in prison, okay? And that's the exact same fate that should happen to all those people on that list that had anything to do with the uh, hoaxes of Apollo 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17, okay? That's about all. Uh, if you guys have any comments you'd like to make or you like these live streams, just drop a comment below. And uh, this is Moon Landing Hoax uh, live stream number three. Uh, maybe I'll do a number four in a couple days if you guys like this. Have a good day. Take care. Bye-bye now.